75 years ago today, Mainers were fighting devastating wildfires. October 1947 was the month Maine burned. The fire swept across more than 200,000 acres and killed 16 people. Fires in Bar Harbor and Kennebunk got many of the headlines, but the flames also laid waste to the small town of Brownfield, just south of Freiburg. As 207's Don Kerrigan reports, the memories are still vivid for those who lived through the inferno. It was October 1947, and Maine was dry, way too dry, no rain for months. But in the town of Brownfield, life went on as usual. Lois Johnson was just 11 then, living with her mother in their house on Main Street. This was that street in 1908, and Lois says the town still looked pretty much the same in 47. Her house was in the distance in this photo. And pretty. Very pretty town, very pretty. Mm -hmm. It's hard to look back at that and, and look at it now. This was a beautiful old town. Look, see these buildings? Mm -hmm. Oh, they were beautiful, big buildings. Gabriel Merrill now helps the Brownfield Historical Society preserve those memories. She was 16 that year, living on the farm with her family, when somehow, in the neighboring town of Freiburg, a fire started. And then the fire this probably was somewhere near the, the, their origin, potentially. Yeah. Yeah, and came down and spread and just uh, probably wind driven. Definitely wind driven. Retired forest ranger Greg Haslin and current ranger Kent Nelson say that wind was like a dry hurricane and drove the flames toward Brownfield. I believe somebody had said, uh, come, come to the house and said, don't worry, Thelma, your house will never burn. Mm. But it did. She says the fire was burning northwest of town but coming slowly that first day and part of the second. Then all hell broke loose. It came around Perry Mountain and you never heard any freight, freight train make any more noise. Really, you could hear it? Oh, yeah, I guess you could hear it. My brother uh, drove the cattle, our dairy cows, down the road to Hiram. Everyone in town piled what they could onto trucks and into cars and rushed to escape the flames. They were going up Haleytown Road and the fire started, landed somewhat on the cushions and things that they had loaded in the truck. And it's not a wall of fire, um, like a wave coming in in the ocean. It's, it's embers going firebrands this way, a house ignites and that shoots off more embers. Nothing anyone could do but try to escape. And Conway Fire Department sat right in front of our house and they left. Wow. There was nothing they could do. Brownfield, population around 700, lost 200 homes, 21,000 acres burned. When we come back, you come up over the hill and you couldn't tell where you were. And your family was living in town? Yes, 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 and it, they lost everything. Louise Huntress was less than a year old when fire took her town. And everything was gone and they had $300 insurance on the house. The Red Cross and the military came in to provide temporary shelter, including metal houses from the military that could hold two families. This is the only one left. The Red Cross also provided some money to help people rebuild. It was just devastating. Louise says her family got one of those Red Cross homes. Gabriel's family moved to a vacant farm across the river in Conway. Lois and her mother lived in a metal house until they could rebuild the next year. She still lives in that house today. But that lovely main street with old buildings and trees was gone and never built back. The few houses around Lois's house were built after the fire. Same with most of the town. But um, you just see the char mark under here. The there are still a few visible scars. Greg has this stump on his land with roots that are still charred from where the fire moved through the ground. They had areas where that duff, that organic layer of the soil, was completely burned. 
and all that was left was just sand or rocks. And some of that hasn't even come back to this day. And there are other scars harder to see. Yeah, mom, my, even to this day when she, when she was alive, if she saw a field full of grass, oh, she had such a fit. She said a cigarette will do us in again. The 47 fire remains a pivotal moment in the life of these communities. 75 years ago, Brownfield lost homes and businesses, as well as the school and the town office. In its place now is the Historical Society, a building that did survive the flames and was moved here. It holds the memories of what was and what was lost on that terrible October day. How long did it take Brownfield to recover, to bounce back? I don't know if they ever did, really. It never be the same. Wow, the shots of that fire, so powerful, even today. Those memories, too, to hear it from those ladies has real power. Absolutely. So Brownfield has rebounded as far as population goes. The 1950 census lists just over 600 people. In 2020, the population was more than 1,600. At the same time Brownfield was burning, fire was also bearing down on Bar Harbor. Tomorrow on 207, a look at how that tragedy changed Bar Harbor into the place we know today.